Hi, welcome to the Parenting Bridge podcast. I'm Dr. Michelle Alden, a licensed professional counselor, parent coach, and family therapist. And I'm here to help you to build a bridge to your best family possible. The question came up, you know, what exactly is a challenging child? And I was thinking about, you know, it's hard in some sense for me because all of the kids that I help parents with, I would label as challenging. That's why parents call me. But you may be wondering, like, you know, maybe I don't really need help. Maybe I, I can, you know, it'll get better. You know, it's they're going to mature, you know, things like that. But listen, if you have a diagnosis of ADHD um, um, and then it's moving into oppositional defiance or mood disorders, um, if you're dealing with extreme uh, kids that are extremely anxious, that's also that tends to lead into depression. Most of the kids I work with have both of those. And if you or if you have adoption related issues where you know it's related to their attachment or their um, inability to firmly attach or the insecure attachment, um, if your kids are lying a lot, like not just telling stories, you know, make things up, but like lying about everything, like they're holding the cookie in their hand and lying that they didn't take it. Um, that has to do with the way that their brain is functioning. If you are having a lot of conduct problems at school, at home, even if it is only at home, but you're, and so the school doesn't necessarily see the same things you are, but you know what you're facing at home. If your child is acting out aggressively and if they're having meltdowns and acting out aggressively in those meltdowns, if they're lasting a long time, but also like if your child is past the toddler years and they're still having meltdowns, like you have some challenges that we need to face. Um, you know, if they need an IEP or a 504, if they have learning disabilities, um, violent outbursts, um, if they're hurting the people around them, if if other kids are afraid to play with them and yet your child is telling you they're the one that's being bullied, um, these are all challenges that are not just going to go away on their own. There are things that you can do as a parent that would help you. And so I want to just recommend that you click on our website for a group that you could join and get some help because you might need another perspective. You might need some additional help, especially if you've been dealing with these behaviors for years and years. So I hope this encourages you to kind of know. Also on our website, we have a, a quiz that you can take and that will give you more information about the challenges that you're facing. And so you're going to want to go to healthyfoundations.co and click on that website, take the quiz, learn about our our one-on-one um, parent coaching or our programs that we can offer, and let's see what we can do to help. I have been thinking a lot about success and what success looks like, um, you know, as a parent especially. All of my kids are adults now, and um, I haven't been parenting in my home Um for a couple of years, although you never stop being a parent, <laughs> it's just learning how to do it uh, in ways that works with your adult kids. And I always say that kids are going to be in our families, that we live in our families um, one way or another, much longer as adults than we do as children. So our window with our kids as children is actually very small compared to the rest of the time that we are parents to our kids. So I want to just encourage you to really think about you know, what is successful parenting? Because when we look at what we feel like is success, um, sometimes we come at it at a different place than even the parents. So I know as a parent, um, and we talk about this in the parent training, that a big piece of what you want to see is the behaviors to stop, to for things to get better, for the chaos to be less. Um, one goal that we agree on is that we want to decrease the violence. You know, we want to intervene early so that the violence does not escalate to the point of having to call the police or take children to the hospital unless we really need to get some med management figured out. Um, I like to have those things as a safety backup, but our goal is to really decrease that. Um, but other than that, like our goal is to help you as the parent to parent your children because some of their mental health issues, some of the things that are happening based off of the trauma or the mental health issues that your kids have are not, are not going to necessarily go away. 
but we want to help you to be able to work through that with your kids. We want our kids to know how to work through really strong and disturbing emotions and um, not to just say, oh, you know, they never have meltdowns anymore or they never get that upset. You know, maybe it's because we have them so medicated that they don't, you know, which I'm not against using medication and getting that balanced. But we got to understand that there are always going to be things that trigger our kids. And if you're dealing with kids that have, you know, autism or some brain functioning that you don't even know what some of their triggers are, it's not even about eliminating those triggers, but figuring out how to help your kids to work through that. If we can do that as a parent, help them work through it, then we can also teach our kids how to recognize those things as they come into um, their own, you know, that they recognize like, oh, I'm triggered or I'm feeling manic or I'm feeling really low. Here's the things I need to do to help myself. They are not at that place yet. So we have to help you as the parent be at that place. To me, that is real success on our end is if we can help you as the parent to use the tools, to know what to do, to know that the holidays are coming and that even though you're afraid that it's going to be as bad as it was last year or the year before, that when you see those behaviors start to spike, you intervene early and know what to do. And that actually, when you look back, it's like, oh, wow, like I saw it, but we didn't really have that much problem that we've had before. Or we had these problems and here's what we did and we handled it Um, because we're going to have problems with our kids as parents and we got to know how we are going to handle it in our families. So when you think about what success means to you, what success is in your family, you know, go back to some of the early training that we did, even in the in the parent training, you know, where we looked at now and the future, what we wanted our families and the bridge of what it was going to take to get there. You know, what what does it mean for you to be a successful parent? And let me tell you, as a parent of adult children, um, You're going to have moments, especially moms, (laughs) you're going to have moments when your kids struggle or they go through something or they say something and you are going to wonder if you were successful. Did you, did I do that? Did I cause that? Um, I have times when I've gone back to my kids and said, hey, you know, I just keep thinking about this incident when you were 10 and Um, I'm really sorry. And my kids are like, that's not even what they're remembering or focused on. And then there's other things that they remember that I said or did that I'm like, wow, like I do not even remember that, but it was significant to them. Um, Good and bad. So, you know, just be prepared that there is, um, you know, a little bit of this that we carry. And that's what we have to kind of keep bringing before kind of like, what are our goals here? You know, if you have kids with severe emotional behaviors and um, disturbances, like our goal really is to help them learn how to regulate, to really work on our connections with our kids because they're disconnected because of the stuff that's going on in their brains, whether they're, you know, have attachment issues or not. Like that connection piece is so important because remember, they're going to be part of your family long after they're um, adults. You know, and this is the future for you, your relationship with them. So it's not about being their friends, but it's, I want your kids to leave your home knowing what your values are and what your family, like in our family, we do this, or my mom is like this, or my dad believes this. Even if they choose to go a different path, I want them to know that about you. Know what your boundaries are, you know? And so think about those things, like what do you want your family to be? Remember that that connection piece is huge. It's more important than the reasoning. It's more important than anything right now, you know, is the regulation and the connection. That's going to help your kids get through this stuff and help them be more in tune with themselves so that they can get through things as an adult. They may not um, have their life lined out and planned out in the way that you hoped when, you know, they were younger, even maybe in the way that they're saying now at, you know, 10 years old or 11 years old, you know, what they want to do. But we have a better chance of helping them to move into adulthood if we can work on that regulation and we work on that connection now. So, you know, those are two really big um, successes for me as a parent um, coach, as a guide to you. But I want you to just, uh, 
you know, think about what that means to you. Like what would be successful in your family and what is successful for you as a parent? Um, and uh, don't beat yourself up because it might look different than your neighbor or, you know, your your sister's kids or whatever it is. So um, hope that was encouraging. If you have any questions, let us know. Thanks for listening to The Parenting Bridge. Do you want to learn more about building a bridge to better behaviors? Pick up a copy of Dr. Michelle Alden's new book, Parenting Emotionally Distressed Kids. Or for more resources, you can click on the link for Healthy Foundations. If you would like to leave a comment or a question for Dr. Alden, there's a link in the notes. We'll see you next time. And remember, things can always get better.